Hey there, what if I tell you that I can deploy any resource on the cloud using Terraform without writing a single line of Terraform code? Yes, you heard it right. It will be fully automated using a DevOps pipeline and the power of artificial intelligence or AI. So let's get started. Now first let's understand what are the high level steps involved in this process. User will be using our custom made UI or it can be well integrated with any ticketing tool which can go through some approval process or something like that. Then that UI or ticketing tool can simply trigger our Azure DevOps pipeline. Then in our Azure DevOps pipeline, we will be using one Python which will basically go to Gemini API, get the text back. In the text, we will be having the code and we will be putting that code as a Terraform file in our pipeline runner. Then using Terraform, we will be deploying those resources on the cloud. Once the resources are deployed, we'll take that code and Terraform state file, we'll upload that into a bucket just for future reference or we can use that code and state file in order to modify something in the future. Without wasting any more time, let's have a demo, then we can walk through the coding part as well. So this is my UI. I've created a simple UI using HTML JavaScript and here are two prompts as you see. I need to provide the GCP project ID and this is for GCP but it can be used for any other cloud provider, doesn't matter. The authentication has to be there. So let me grab my project ID which is this one and let me grab my first prompt. I'll put it here. So what I'm basically saying, I want to create a GCS bucket in Google Cloud. What provider version I need for the Terraform code? What will be my bucket name? What will be my region? What will be my storage class? If I need any versioning or anything? and rest can be default in my case. And what I'll simply do, I'll simply click on this submit button over here and it will trigger that pipeline in Azure DevOps. And if you are wondering how to set this trigger and anything like that, I'll put the link of my previous video where I've explained how we can use Azure DevOps API. And I'll also put all the relevant links which might be helpful to understand this video better. Now let me click on this submit button. And here I get a response and the run ID of my request is 97. Now let me go to pipelines and this is my pipeline which will basically execute my job and let's go inside. As we see it has started a new job over here. Let's click on that. Let's click on job again. So it has started. Now it has got the Terraform code from Gemini API. It has created main.tf in the local file system. Even the Terraform job is done. Here is the plan for my bucket and the bucket creation was successful. Then after that, it has used our custom code to upload the state file and the main.tf into our bucket. This bucket is basically pre-created in order to hold all those things. So let's take a look. This is my GCP console. As of now, only one bucket is created. Let me click on refresh now. And this is the bucket which is created now using our simple prompt from our UI. And let us check if the state file and other things are uploaded or not. We got the run ID 97. It has created a folder for that particular run. And here are my files main.tf and terraform.tf state. I'll simply download this and we'll check that later. Now let's understand how I did it. So this is my pipeline. There is no automatic trigger. Everything will be manual like an API call. It will be running on Ubuntu latest. Then I'm executing some bash commands or shell script. It is going into my folder which is basically residing in Azure repo itself. So here is YouTube one directory and here is episode 10. Then I'm just echoing the user prompt and the project ID which we have given in the UI. It is installing the Gen AI Python library or module. I'm using one variable group to hold all the keys and other things which I need to authenticate with Gemini API. You can check my previous video link in the description how you can set the API keys and other things. I'm exporting that as one environment variable which is called Gemini API key. Then I'm simply triggering scripts slash Gemini API which is nothing but this Python code. And I'm giving the project ID as an input and the user prompt itself. The English query which was given by the user. Once it is done, I'm just equating and I'm just checking the files what are generated. And let's take a look how the Gemini API looks like. And it is really interesting. At first I'm importing the GenAI library, then Pydantic, another library. This library will be installed along with this pip command. Then I'm importing the standard libraries like OS, JSON, Sys. 
I am getting the environment variable which I have set in the pipeline, which is nothing but our Gemini API key. I am storing that in a variable. I am taking the first argument, which is my project ID. Then I am taking the second argument, which is the user prompt itself. I am concatenating that with some little more details. So what I need to achieve, I am telling here, like I need to do it on GCP and please give me a Terraform script. I am asking Gemini and after that, I am concatenating the project ID in order to generate the code in a deployable manner. So nothing will be missing and I am finally creating the prompt using all of those combinations. Then I am defining how I want the output from Gemini API in a structured way. So I am using the base model from Pydantic. I am creating a local class called TF code and I am defining my parameter or dictionary will be TF code and it will be a string type. What I mean by that, whatever code will be generated by Gemini that will be sent back to us as a JSON file or JSON text and that JSON will contain something called TF code which will hold the entire code as a text or string and defining the client. In the client, I'm defining the generate content and I'm specifying which model I'm gonna use. Gemini 2 point flash, you can change that depending on your need. Then I'm giving the prompt as content. Then I'm defining how I want my output to be structured into. I'm saying application JSON. So my output will not be a simple text. It will be in a JSON format. And also I'm specifying the schema, which I've defined over here. That is it. Once the response comes, simply I can take the response dot text, which is in a text format, and that will hold the entire JSON. Then I'm using JSON dot loads in order to change the JSON into Python dictionary. And that will be stored into dict JSON. Then simply I'm taking out the TF code. And you know, in a dictionary, if you give the key, you'll get the entire value, which I'm storing into TF code variable and simply creating one Terraform file, which is main.tf using the content of TF code, which we got from the Gemini API. It is really simple. As you see, few lines of code. Once we get that, I'm using a secure file from Azure DevOps where I have kept the GCP key basically or service account key. You can check in the description. I will put another link of my video where I have explained the secure file variable groups and how to authenticate with GCP. Then I'm using that secure file and I'm defining Google application credentials, which is an environment variable and Terraform will automatically authenticate using that Terraform init and simply Terraform apply to deploy the resources on the cloud. Once it is done, what I'm doing I'm simply uploading those files into a predefined bucket. So I'm installing the library for that Python code and exporting that Google application credentials again using that secure file. And I'm simply calling another script, which is I'll show you. I'm importing storage and sys. I'm taking the arguments like what is the bucket name where I need to upload and if any ticket number is there. In our case, I don't have any ticketing tool. I'm simply taking the build.build .build ID or the pipeline number itself, not pipeline number, the run ID, which will be generated runtime. Then simply I'm uploading that main.tf and terraform.tf state. This code will be shared in the GitHub and I'll paste a link in the description. And that is basically it. Now let's take a look how our Terraform file was generated and how it looks like. So let me drag into my Visual Studio code. This is the state file which was generated by the Terraform command. It's nothing special. Let's take a look in the main.tf, which was generated by Gemini. We have specified our provider version should be greater than 4.0, which looks like this. We have given this prompt. We have given our project ID and our region. And here is our bucket details. And as you see, space intendations also correct. We didn't even run Terraform FMT or anything like that. How cool is that? Let me close this. Let me try my prompt once more and let me create something else. This is fun. We can deploy anything. Here is my another prompt. And what I'm basically saying, I need to create a VPC, a subnet, a region of that subnet, the CIDR or IP range and register defaults. Or maybe let me create another subnet along with this. Subnet two name, maybe DB subnet, region, let it be same or it can be changed. And maybe I'll change the CIDR. So maybe I'm deploying one application in the US West one region and I need one DB subnet, another application subnet maybe, and I need to provide my GCP ID, okay, or the project ID. Put here, let me click submit. 
I'll get another run ID which is 98 now. Okay, that's great. Let me go to pipelines. This one, another job is triggered now. Let's go inside and wait for the magic to happen. And meanwhile, let me show you, I don't have any custom VPC now. Oh, it is created. Yeah, Terraform job was done or it is running now. Network is created or creating, then it will create the subnets. How cool is that? But if you really ask me, do I trust AI to do every job of mine? Obviously not. We should use AI responsibly. And if you want to do something like this, you should put some guardrails around this. Maybe some organization policies, sentinel policies, or maybe any open source policies in order to control the outcome. And obviously, if you use any ticketing tool like ServiceNow or anything, the request should be approved properly. Because the prompt is very English-like, anybody can understand what the user is going to create and that should be approved appropriately. Now let's take a look. Let me hit a refresh once again. Now subnet count is 2. Let me go inside. Let me check the subnets now. And here are two subnets. App subnet and DB subnet. Both are in US West 1. These are the IP ranges which I have specified in the prompt. And let us check the Terraform code. Okay, that is in cloud storage buckets. Here is my bucket run id 98 and here are two files. Let me download those. I am interested in main.tf mostly. Downloads 98 main.tf okay and here it is. And as you see it looks perfectly awesome. That is it for today. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about this and let's meet in some next amazing topics. Thanks for watching.